Hey there, welcome back. This is Robin Hood. Ha! Tricked ya. This is Maurice, but we're gonna talk about Robin Hood Shervo, Sherwood Builders. New game, absolutely amazing game, and I'm gonna give you 40 tips and tricks. I've been through the game, I can give you, I wish I knew when I started the playing, so let's not waste your time. Uh, then down in the description will be every single point listed out. You can read them out and just skip the videos, and I'll put the timestamps, well, I'm gonna be really quick, I'm gonna cut the video, so if you have any additional questions, you might have a lot of them, ask in the chat, well, not chat, the description, the comment section I'm trying to answer, but let's jump right in the game, and this is the first step already. Uh, before you start the game, there is a setting that you can change, and I highly advise, it sounds good to go dynamic, try it out, one combat will be enough, you will realize the dynamic, all the enemies move out of your reach, it's absolute nightmare. Precise is way easier and better, at least from my standpoint. So I, that's the tip I'm trying to give you right here. Next tip, gather fast travel points. If you don't know, in the map there are the signposts, but that also counts as stable masters. So horses and those signposts are the points where you can fast travel from anywhere. So it's really crucial to gather them. And if you're wondering what is gathering, let me show you that actually leads us to point number three is mark points of interest. So one of them is marking just where you want to go so you don't lose the site where you're going. But pay attention here. You see this, I'm trying to show you the, the line at the top. That's That post is with the red color around it. And this is how it looks on the map. Everything that is in gray, I know it's there only when I'm near to this location. And only when I arrive at that location, I'm not gonna run all the time, it will be marked. And it is important why, let me show you why. Let me port somewhere a little bit further away. When we are far away, all the gray marks that are not marked, I wasn't close enough. They are gone because right now, take a look. This is where I know was the stables and everything is gone because I was not properly marking them. This is important, especially when it comes to uh, mines. For example, I know there's a copper mine right here. Why? Because it is marked. I marked the signpost, I marked the, this, this uh, pickaxe, so now I know. Otherwise, without marking, they will be gone. This is really crucial to understand how the game works. At the top, you see at my uh, what is it called? marker, the, the compass, you see I have marked buildings near, but there are something that I haven't never visited that is important. The sooner you understand how to mark them and get on your map for further, further information to keep it, that will be crucial. While we are in a map, this is important also to bring up the legend. I'm a little bit covering, but don't, don't worry. The most important part is where and how to find trees. So there are trees, it's pretty difficult to understand uh, the colors because you see that each region is colored also, but uh, you can, for example, let me show you one of the locations right here. You see when you zoom in, you see it's striped and you see you can find in the legend what is the um, corresponding tree that you can get there. And not only this, the legend, how to bring it up, but also is here, um, switch to reputation. And it is important, let me show you. This is the one side of the map. When you switch here, this shows, for example, locations you haven't uh, captured yet that gives you reputation. But not only that, not only for reputation, but also this is the way how it shows where my quest is. For example, I can switch and, and easily start tracking and get back on track to that uh, location of where the quest leads. For example, as you can see here, these other quests I don't see. Only when you switch the screens, you see where is my unfinished quest, then I can continue, right? All right. Another point, silly but is important in this game, is explore everything. Especially when you start 
let's focus on this area uh these ruins that are not marked these you see we know that there is something something there even if there's no marker my advice this game is built to be explored because you will find the chest there you will find sometimes bandits there the bandits have dropped some absolutely crucial loot you will find every corner only when is everything blank it means nothing interesting there but as soon as you see something there might be event there might be something where you gain reputation every single part in this game is meant to be explored simple as that uh yes go for it so those ruins are as we now know where the puzzles are the puzzles don't don't think they are just a mimic or something you find absolutely important things there like upgrades and money and for upgrades uh, let me show you what there are so you are aware of that there are three levels of upgrades um journeyman well journeyman chest chest yeah it's ah quality low quality good quality and high quality that's a three level system for every item in the game so you will see my inventory as well is colored like that but what's important is the tip number eight it is for upgrade your weapons I sat too long I didn't know from the start how much I will get them well you can't purchase them so you need to find them get from enemies and such but the outcome is for example the level one I have fully upgraded gear a weapon everything well not fully simple ball, but don't sit on it and my advice weapon especially is really important I have upgraded everything every single uh, weapon I had every tier I upgraded fully I advise to do the same another point of income not only from these ruins is when you hunt down deers you see right from the the beginning there is even a fast travel post there are three areas where spawn deers go there one shot with any bow any arrow will kill them after killing you get uh, the hides and also meat meat you can cook if you want to extra time but you will get more money uh, this is how I made money at the start absolutely going hunting spree and bring back sell everything and you will get a lot of money uh, later on is when you have farms and there is an, that's the next big chunk of money but let me show you what's the problem why you can start there is when you start building farms are right here farms require you sandstone and sandstone either purchase somewhere you need to find a, tr a trader but faster is when you build uh, not quarry here here miners but this is the second resource so basically it means you need to have upgrade for miners then they bring you sandstone and then you can build a farm until then you will rely on deer meat and hides after that later when you build a farm build two or three and when you start upgrading them just getting the resources what they make this is where i have my i have two farms but they will make ham and compre just all, they make a huge amount so you just get these items and just sell it immediately and that's how you make money later in the game all right and all right while we are on this topic uh the resources where and what to check for example we know how to make things but you will find for example you need silver or copper or something and where to get those resources this game is absolutely cool and awesome because you can mouse over and i am sitting in front of everything but mouse over and you see that shows that it is crafting material location is in mines and mines are located in barnsdale and if you follow the previous tips when you mark everything you see we are in region barnsdale you can get that from the journals and everything and you can find that yes in this region if i have all the mines unlocked you can mouse over and see where what was so that's how it is and the same is true for the trees 
shows right away that is in forest so no other wandering around and in what kind of maps you can find them then the legend kicks in and you get precise location where to go and get those items and that is true for almost every single part right here for example this is construction so you can't get glass anywhere you construct it you build it which basically leads to the point where you need chemistry so that's later in the future while we are in the base uh, shooting range for arrows i was looking for some time and yes when you build a shooting range that is where you unlock shooting um, skills but also you get what yes of course extra next level arrows and also bows so if and as you are looking for more damage uh, all other items are in, in the blacksmith but uh, the, the same arrows just improving a next level next material is absolutely amazing so yes that that this, this shooting range is needed if you're wondering then all the bows and arrows are made as the first bow and arrow that game teaches you is literally in your inventory so it's not in blacksmith or anywhere else it's literally you just gather the resources and make it by yourself while we are on inventory topic uh, my advice just my experience but uh, in weaving mill that's where you make your armor and everything I highly highly recommend it to build it and you at the start you have already one kind of armor uh, that's not greatest vitality vitality gear in my opinion is the best I have even in level third there's vitality what it gives extra health that's well, I'm in front of it but I can show you it here so it gives extra health points and this is upgraded version but most important is health regeneration the first uh, set gives only three uh, health per second but hey what it means in, after every combat you don't rely you basically need to survive you can kill enemies you can run away you can port away or anything just while you're doing or going to the next point of interest your health will come back this gear absolutely changed how the game plays out because it also gives you more breathing room because you have more health right awesome and next step is about 70 plus hunger if ah, i'm hungry at this that side of the screen there's a hunger meter but what doesn't game doesn't show you is when you open this skill three uh passive skills and all the skills with under keyboard age age yes age so here you can find that you how much res um, stats you have for example you also can find how much precisely hunger and thirst you have and the best thing about it it's not hard to manage but what is important is when you have both of these um hunger and food over 70 for example now i don't have you see right under the health there is a little arrow that shows up what it means it means that it's i'm well fed and additional damage i don't know how much it is but it's pretty easy to maintain you just need to bow a bow 70. if i open up i i'm now fully hunger and thirst is full so it takes a while to drop down meanwhile i have extra damage i highly advise to get that all that freaking time what else is 100 block is the best uh simple as that my advice is when you see weapons there are a lot of stats my favorite stat is blocking well i'm a little bit in front of me but you see there's 60 percent blocking the funny thing is you can find a weapon that has 100 percent immediately ah, damn it i need to move myself once again but it's important uh the bastard sword well it comes after upgrades and everything but few things is blocking when it has 100 percent what it gives it gives you every time you just stand in block mode that does not consume any energy or nothing every damage that comes in front of you besides arrows will be absolutely mitigated so when you have 100 percent this block let me move myself back you will basically have unlimited 
time in the fights as long as you keep your block. And what is the good part? The good part is you can get the, those 100% uh, even for weapons that don't initially have them. Let me show you uh, the Mar Damascus Steel Sword. Originally, I'm again in front, but that's the percentage. It has 90% blockchain. But the thing is, when you upgrade weapons, all the stats upgrade as well. And as you can see, when it's upgraded, I have 100% blocking, 100% stability, and armor penetration 75. And if you look at the original, the stats were wait, right here, 90, 90, 50, which gives us a clue that you can add additional 25%. I, I make this um, assumption from armor penetration. Originally, it was 50, and 10 times upgraded, fully upgraded is 75. So it seems like at least armor penetration went up by 75. But also we now know is blocking. I increased from 90 to 100, but it means it doesn't go past, which means weapons that have these percentages, um, for example, block penetration 30, let's check, bastard for sword, Bastard Sword originally had a uh, block penetration was 20, now it's 30. Armor penetration was now is 15, was 10. So it increases not by one third. I think that's or yeah, 50%. Half of original value can be added. If it was 10, it could be 15. It was 15 it can be 75 yes that's that's as far as go so to reach 100 percent means you should have at least 65 percent of these ratings for example 65 blocking or armor penetration or something when you have fully upgraded it should be 100 percent that's the additional information i just calculated myself because i realized how that works so when you have 100, as you see, that's the best. So when you are safe uh, and, and under your 100% block, nothing else matters as much. But what matters is next step is maxed weapon is better. Let me show you right away. I have now look at the damage, damage only. We have Bastard Sword, which is blue, which is level 2 tier. And it has damage 20, uh, 58 to 64. When I needed to switch, wanted to switch to level 3, look what happens when your damn it, I need to move myself again. Um, it has 55 to 68, 63, 65, 46, 55. You see, previous tier full upgrade is better, and not only because of the damage, the damage. So some other values might be better the blocking and something something but what you need to pay attention to is which is really important is each weapon tier will be fixed with different things for example uh, these green high quality items need must be repaired by high quality repair tool which doesn't sound like a big problem until until you click on it and you see one of these upgrades it cost 800 bucks uh, money the previous one the previous 400 and the same goes for the level one when you have fully leveled up level one sword think twice before upgrading because this upgrade tool costs so cheap and it has the same damage only when you have enough upgrade kits for this um, next year weapon and you have reasonable income of money to make these repairs then it's good idea to switch just keep that in mind all right so minor thing but build everything not ev other games allow you to skip some parts if you're not invested somewhere somewhere but long story short in this game every single building but tavern tavern i don't know why that's absolute garbage i don't see any reason but you have skill points here, you have arrows here, you have sense upgrade here. 
you need people you need every single one of these buildings to upgrade even if you don't like alchemy for example you don't want any potions you need it to craft and basically have some resources the palladium the platinum and 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 such that needs for all other buildings so basically the game is built quite simple you need everything and for example the quarry lumber uh, mill and farms farm is absolutely needed for money lumber mill and quarry helps with resource gathering and supplying and also for money making for example when you have quarry upgraded that produces iron that now you can sufficient um, iron for all the repair kits but also you can sell it and just have money because money plays bigger role than you would think every single upgrade every single crafting item requires resources and money so yes that's a problem so while we are on building now when you realize you need to build everything but the decoration item that's that's also part of the things but uh, why i say blacksmith build as soon as possible is not a big brain game but if you see the the what's what's available there at level one um of course we are talking about repair tool tools but these are needed not only for your weapons but also for your uh, pickaxe and and, and uh, hatchet and lockpick lockpick it is another another really important reason to build blacksmith that's a most reliable way to have them and to build them yeah just just go with that all right and that also leads to the next point as, as boring as it sounds yes all the time bring with you lockpick repair and when you have acid uh let me show you how it looks like it doesn't it doesn't look like i have them no 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 no, no. i have my order so always i have different tier tools so i'm bringing with me different tier of repairs so i don't have there's no reason to come for me to come back to your uh, to the house i have lock picks at least one stack that's 10 but well i'm bringing two stacks because of reasons I, one time i run out never again and acid why acid because when you you can build it pr pretty easily and quite fast at alchemy lab literally level one here you go you have sulfur you will have empty bottle that's it you have the acid and why should you is there will be some doors that don't require locks but you dissolve it by acid which is pretty amazing but when you realize you found one such place and you don't have acid well that's a problem you can see and okay you already saw but that goes to the next tip is don't sell stolen goods this is how they look like it's literally uh they found in camps and and caravans and such things it's they are really precious they're only one time from single place they will never respond that's it there's two options you can give in them for resources the game explains it easily game uh says you can get it in exchange of reputation or you can sell it to vendor and when you look at the map for example Barnsdale I have 100% it is not possible if you sell any single piece of that because they are all accounted and as soon as you sell one that's it you will never ever be able to get 100% even with trainers yes they don't work uh, confirmed in a um, discussion in a forum you will not be able to get 100% and if you're wondering <laughs> Who needs 100% you need everyone needs why because 100% reputation provides you reward uh, I'm gonna spoil it a little bit not my much but in this one precise location you can't that's not a spoil you will find it eventually there is a quest marker that leads here but right next to it here are four closed doors those doors do not open only you when you have key the reward is the key when you have 100 percent one region done you immediately are granted a key then go here and one of those doors can be open and there's unique absolutely unique reward i have one then i have missed i don't have one last percentage and i know where you also saw it this seems to be bugged because there's 
locked door where key doesn't drop anyways so i am highly advising to going after these rewards they are amazing not gonna spoil okay spoiler warning for those who are interested how good things we are talking about there uh you'll be warned i'm gonna show you my first item what i get out of it it's item yes so oh yeah i have a lot of keys but this that this is the item what i get from first region unlocked 24 inventory slots that's a lot 50 max weight that's a lot especially if you don't put your points in in the in the skill tree that's a lot so i can't wait to see what is behind the rest of the three doors because i expect some weapon damage some speed some, i don't know some crazy shit. <laughs> but i'm excited so now let's switch our gears to a little bit about combat i'm not going in the combat not going to try capture those um, those um, precise points i'm gonna go near but stealth as much as you can why i say this is two main reasons one that is literally you can one hit kill enemy when you are from the uh, from behind and they haven't been noticed noticed you uh you can kill with one single basically blow which is great for another more reasons than one nah not like this so i attack uh when they attack like this you see i'm blocking this 100 block uh now i have to spend at least how many two three one okay two hits because they are absolutely i'm out out uh, leveling them but uh the weapon the weapon durability those repairs uh, are required so when you health skill still damn it self kill yes then your weapon does not lose durability oh no oh no so anyways this is what i'm talking about uh about uh, the the block and i'm gonna show you i need to switch so block and parry everything okay let's spend these few points in this uh as you can see i can block absolutely everything and if you're wondering what is parrying yes like in every game it works when the blow is really near hitting you yeah uh then it's go it goes in slow mo i don't see particular reason to do that but if you can that was parry it gives you slow mo but you don't move as fast you just have a breathing room to uh calculate your next steps so blocking is fine blocking is fine the parrying is not needed and that's it so next tip is when you are in combat you will uh you will see that sprinting now suddenly uses your stamina it's called an energy called energy in this game but how every other game treats it, it's stamina it's the uh, orange bar above your health so when you do this sprinting or some crazy these things let me show you what happens when you run out of it you literally stop to catch a breath you can't move you can't block you can't dodge you can't do nothing other games when you run out of stamina you just couldn't block or you can still move or something this game literally punishes you really hard trust me you don't want that so don't use all that energy uh another point is a red dot these none of these enemies i don't have them uh with spears and and pick uh, not pickaxes but uh every that type of weapon that are on long spears in this game they sometimes do attack that will trigger a little red dot it's really hard to do something about it but there are two options first off you can't dodge you can't parry those those attacks they're strong attacks but what you can do is you can dodge you don't know dodge happens with uh when you press spacebar in one of the directions the problem is pay attention here if you are holding your block you cannot dodge you need to release the block and only then you can dodge that's how you can avoid these things but another thing is 
when enemies attack, if you attack them first, that also counts uh, with these red dots, you can counter hit it. Either you both will cancel out each other's attack, or if you manage to hit enemy before enemy hits you, they will stagger and they will not finish their attack. That's how in this game this works. So that red thing, red dot thing, it's absolutely the worst. Um, next is stay out of the sight. I actually, well, not accidentally, I killed the archer, but for example, here, you, you saw that archer that was hitting nastily hitting me. When you use, for example, any kind of barricade, anything, I'm still blocking every attack. But when you move around like this and have all the time some 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 cliffs or buildings or fences uh, around you, you limit the time or so basically chance for enemy archers to shoot you. If you are in open field just blandly like I was before, you saw I took some arrows, not in a knee, but well, that's the thing. So that's my advice to do that. Another thing, another thing, let me try to pull out my sword. What you can do is, next step is shooting enemy legs and helmets. And sometimes, yes, these items do, they work when we are not engaged in combat, enemies will be attracted by those sounds, so that's something to know. But, what you can do, I hope I will not kill them, but what you can do is shoot enemy in the leg. For that time, you see, that enemy is way slower. I can single out and have them separated one by one. That's one thing that game does not show you, and I probably these are too weak, they will die immediately but uh, enemies with really really badass helmets these helmets can can be shot off their heads yeah these are not sometimes it takes two arrows in a in a in a face but try it out yeah oh, this was single shot. sorry yes that's that's how it goes uh, now you know that you can absolutely also take their helmets off, okay? And that's the thing. So what to do in a combat is when you want to heal. Um, my advice is to take a distance. Distance is as simple as... as oh, you're stuck. Yeah. Silly goose. Uh, run away with sprinting. Uh, especially when, when you can run around some obstacles that they will take longer time to, uh, to get to you, for example, you know. Then select your healing balm and apply it. The thing is, when you apply it, you cannot run. And if you apply when enemy is standing next to you, obviously they will hit you. That's not what you want. So to heal, just gain a distance, switch some item. While you are applying, you can still move a little bit. And then immediately switch back and now in you see i am healing it's it takes uh, heal over time uh, so it's not immediate why because next step is um you can't use bottles there are potions but for those potions you need bottles and bottles somehow in this game you can't make you can just empty some other vine or something then if it's left over or you drink out all the taken water with you uh that's that's how you get the bottles so the main point is bottles are really problematic so you can make a balm uh, this this for example comfort balm balm and that is uh health over time that's the main point um I'm trying to make and last but not least why I'm trying to keep this guy uh, alive is I'm gonna show you one next step is um, trust is good and kick is epic what it means is I have learned two skills and two skills only well okay um, this three hit also is great but well, let's not worth my, my, my time and your time but trust what is trust uh, that skill is obtained right here 
it, it's called backward attack. Let me demonstrate how it works. The guy will die immediately. Uh, is when you step backwards, right? First you you uh, get distance, but then when you attack, this is the thrust. It's literally when you have a button pressed uh, to go backwards, and then you hit. Why it's so cool is one thing. You see, just going backwards, absolutely, you can avoid enemy attacks. Sometimes they have these leaps and jumps that they will hit. Of course, arrows will hit you, but the thing is, you see, I am avoiding that guy every single moment. Uh, the AI is programmed to come to me to make an attack. The thing is, remember, that trust, that attack, it is going forward. So what I can do, I'm trying to get in the way, it looks like. And when I see enemy coming to me, what I can do is, right before enemy reaches me, I... Damn it. I press a trust, it will make step forward, it will trust enemy and enemy will receive damage before it hits me. Come on, come to me, let me demonstrate trust. See, I'm going backwards, I'm going backwards. Stupid enemy. And strike. It's easy, usually works if the act was triggered the, the killing attack. Anyways, it's really good. Another thing is kick. You have kick from the start. Uh, let me show you. Kick is already unlocked. And the thing is, with melee attacks, you have you have only one special key, one special availability for your um, skill. This is where it, where it is. You see, I have unlocked some double slash and spin slash. None of them stay close to kick. Why? Because kick allows you to kick enemies with shields on the ground. And shields are really nasty. So I advise highly to have kick. This is epic. This is how you make Sparta move, right? So keep it. It's absolutely great. Let's leave it like that. Next 10 points, next 10, 10 tips is patrols are on the roads. About the patrols, remember I mentioned how reputation is important and things, there are things as caravans and tax collectors. You see this, this road, it looks a little bit weird. This also, it's thick and it's colored. Doesn't, probably the color, now I'm realizing that this is red will be caravans and probably uh, the greens are tax collectors, but that doesn't matter. You need both of them. You need all of them But the thing what game does not explain wherever you see these roads Actually here is also a road the game somehow Screw it up. There's a road that is should be colored because there's tax collector going on it So that's a marker. That's how you can recognize. That's where you can get your missing uh, stolen valuables is when you find these absolutely colored and thick roads, that's where is the caravans and everything. That's where the patrol is. Why I'm mentioning and talking so much about such a nonsense thing? They do not respawn. They spawn only once. If you trigger it, be ready to get it done. If you fail, you can't have your percentage, you can't have your 100% reward and all that. It's really, really problematic. So pay attention to that right and what else is uh, slow motion uh, remember when I managed to tr trigger that one party that went in slow-mo did you know that you can open a slow-mo any moment now the game literally has slow-mo you trigger it by F and if you look at the corner uh, there is um, a marker that goes down but look how fast it refills it's literally, you can play the game all the time on slow-mo. The thing is, pay attention. When I when I start slow-mo, I'm not moving faster. I'm not like dodging and anything, but it allows you to get better um, parries, uh, to better understand. In the fights, for example, when I had a lot of enemies, when enemy is approaching me, you could hit F, and then in slow-mo see and precisely uh, parry that attack. It really, really helps. I am absolutely not utilizing it enough. I died so many times in some overpowering um, enemies 
and afterwards I just realized if I used slow mo more, if I had this um, habit to use slow mo, yes, but I didn't because yes, I'm still learning and giving you advice so not repeat the same mistakes I did. Uh, what we are talking about is also Trapper's Hot. Basically, as I said, you need to build everything because buildings coming crucial. Uh, for arrows, you have this. For for extra attacks, uh, these these uh, trust level one trust is right here. Yes, advice to get it. And three strike combo is another good one. Besides any points, just get these uh, special. Oh, here's the kick forward leap lash and all these. The special can be only one at a time, so don't waste it. For example, double slash, not as great. Kick is way better, right? But we are here to talk about Trapper's Hut. Why? Because Trapper's Hut is the one that allows you to uh, boost up your Hunter's Vision. Hunter Vision says, Hunter Vision shows enemies, lootables, collectibles, Puzzle items, puzzle item locations, traps. It's literally absolutely way better and way needed. And you will see what the upgrades does. Uh, it gives the more distance. You can see through the walls and it goes up by every single upgrade. It is crucial to have it for this game to absolutely, let me show you, yeah, this, this tracker to see the items you need to have it and as funny as it goes next step is use it all the time you saw me using i have already the habit when i approach any interesting point you don't know if there's a trap you don't know if there's there are no enemies hiding behind it and i have put up points for upgrades and also in in talent tree so it takes it stays quite longer and it takes quite a lot of time to refresh and especially when you are looting some spots or you can't find that one stupid puzzle piece they will be highlighted so strong trust me this game is built for having and using this hunter sense because you're a robin hood remember that you will see where are friendlies where are enemies it's i've seen in a comment section in this game in forum like guys asking like where did you find and how to trigger and this puzzle is so hard yet there are pretty nasty places but when you have habit enabling this hunt it, it just recharges it doesn't have any resource nothing else have it all the freaking time right um next step is use bed for only also switching time you know when you have the bed uh, or any place where you can sleep it works as a save game Pretty cool, pretty nifty, right? But another thing is, for example, if you want to explore and see things or you need this sun for these mirror puzzles, that's only doable in the night, in the daytime. If you want to sneak some camp, you want nighttime. Just take any point, any anything and just, you know, choose your, choose your weapon, choose your time you want to play right now. And voila, simple as that. Any bed will do that. Well, apparently it was already daytime, <laughs> but use it in your advantage because in nighttime, daytime, also your visibility changes, right? And another trick I advise to use is use fast travel as a save. Uh, it's easy to, okay, I'm gonna show you. Whenever you go anywhere, like literally anywhere with fast travel, far or close doesn't matter uh, when you are there it should show somewhere in the corner the checkpoint is saved right right here above my head checkpoint updated what it means is from now on if i go in any direction let's say there and die i'm gonna i could load back previous save it will be right here the same happens when you just running for exploration and you find you see there's a uh, this, this thing it will not trigger now because it just saved already <clears throat> but when it's absolutely new signpost when you 
get near to it, you will have this checkpoint upgrade updated again. And it is important because if, for example, I go solve this puzzle, uh, get this bed, um, kill all enemies here, and then, I don't know, here, step on trap and die, every single, none of these other points will trigger the save game. Only the signpost. So sometimes I do that, that I go and do a puzzle, then fast travel back to trigger that save, then going in the mines, then fast travel back, then going here to do the things. If you don't do that fast traveling back to the point, that which actually you can do from any point in the game, even if you are deep in the caves, sometimes it's, it doesn't show, I think, from the caves you can fast travel out, but sometimes you are close to entrance and you can't. So whenever you do this part, I was literally 10 meters away from this signpost, it triggers save game. Use that in your advantage. Trust me, you don't want to go in my path every time dying. Actually, now that didn't trigger, right? It didn't because I was too close. Damn it. Screw you, game. Next, I had to be able to come back from for, for this is prioritize house. Uh, before you have farms, you can hunt yourself a deer. But there's another way how you can get money is you can order like these hunters. They are not built. You can just assign uh, assign workers here. But dough meat can be cooked and then sold for not so bad money because it is passive. You can do your things and these guys will give you uh, meat. The problem is, by the way, you can go way above 100%, is you don't have people working in, those, in these locations. So at start, I especially relocated every single one of you, one of your men, to bring me meat so I can cook it, sell it, and get extra money. The thing is, how you get people is by building houses. That's why this comes in place, despite the fact I already told you to get a blacksmith and to get a trapper and to get an archer, but this is how you make money. Yes, it requires pine and stone, some basic items you have around like, and then coin. Yes, coin is the problem. But remember, the faster you get these, which basically at the end, these houses are super expensive. They are limited amount. You can build them only on the trees. This is how it looks like. Cannot upgrade, do nothing. But the more you build, the more you have hunters and people. You see, I have 53 total workers the more you can relocate here and the more they can bring you meat that you can sell and you you get that you got the cycle that that's how it goes at the start hunting and also making everyone hunt and then selling those food. you purchase by six um the salt but then you cook and it sells absolutely insanely and last few tips is um with x button you switch arrows it seems like a some weird thing minor but pay close attention i have these arrows they are absolutely top-notch and arrows and when it comes to puzzles where sometimes you need to shoot an arrows in some locations and something something you don't want to waste quite expensive materials instead that's why i have basically my main arrows and then the cheapest or or wood arrows or because when triggering those puzzle uh, blocks, uh, those you can press, but when they are up high, you shoot with arrows. You can simply switching switch to bow, and then yeah, I'm gonna move me a little bit. Look at the corner, right in the corner. No, in this side. When I press X, you see this is the changes. I have a lot of primary arrows. These are the secondary. Simple as that, and I, yeah, just a small thing. Uh, another small thing is a sharpness and trader levels. Just minor thing, I'm gonna show you right here. These are traders, they doesn't seem anything particularly interesting about them. Why? Because actually they are level one. When it's level one, there is nothing happening to them. But as you can see, this one where you have number two, it means it's the same baker 
Where's level one baker? Level one baker, okay, there's probably somewhere. But it sells higher level tier goods. It especially comes uh, at play, for example, here, Hunter sells hides. When you are looking and when you need some hides, either you or, or you need some um, herbalist uh, items, if they are level two, don't think you can purchase from level one. Simple as that. These tiers mean something. And the more you will get and, and, and find these items, check if if Hunter has that hide that you're looking for or, or that, that thing. And the same goes for sharpness. What is sharpness? Look at this pickaxe. Sharpness three and sharpness two items right here in one screen. Uh, if you are paying attention, then when you mouse over on my items, you see there's a, I have high level items, they have sharpness, which means you need a specific level item, gather specific wood, and also it works for ores. For ores, you can see that, but wood is similar. It doesn't show you on a map, but you need higher sharpness um, tools. For example, here I have sharpness four, which there is no item requiring for that. But anyways, that's another thing to keep in mind. Not everything can be gathered by everything. Other than that, game is pr pretty linear. You build a house that makes a material to upgrade another house, that makes another material to upgrade another house, that requires material for building an axe, to gather the tree, to gather a new ore, that iron ingot, new pickaxe for new it is pretty linear if you put it out there. But last but not least tip is don't waste your tools and repairs. Uh, I literally just demonstrated I am running around with level 2 hatchet and, and pickaxe. Which is used for everything to mine because they are way cheaper to repair. But when I need some higher tier actually, I'm going for, for these high-end items. And the same I had around when I had level 1 pickaxe and level one um, hatchet and for level two which is way more expensive to to repair just save it and do not waste it that's one of the things how not wasting things another is when you are looking and, and, and checking for example I have a weapon the durability is down to 79 should I repair it absolutely not mouse over and you will see that um, each repair tool gives different amount. Basic was 100, then second level is 150. Last good high quality item is 200, which means if I apply right now 70, like basically I have 80 durability. If I add 200, it will be 280, but the maximum is 230, which will lose a repair thing right the durability so this weapon particularly can be only um fixed by 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 high quality repair set and i need to fix it only when this durability is below 30 and similarly in in, in these weapon cases you have see i have 220 i need to reduce it so when i apply 150 it does not does not um, overflow the maximum another way how we can put it it's of course worst case scenario when in middle of a uh, fight your weapon is going to zero the thing is just quickly adding when tools go to zero they don't disappear they hit zero durability they stop uh, making any significant damage for example hatchet should make up to 90 when it's absolutely destroyed, it will make one or two, like, ah, super low. So you can apply absolutely repair items then. So don't worry about them. They are not disappearing, but you will not lose nothing if you apply when they are destroyed. They also again give you a warning signs and so such things and that. Uh, other than that, if you don't know, then didn't realize then making 55 56 minutes long video about the game you barely heard you might think hey what the hell man uh yes sherwood robin hood sherwood builders i like it i have playing this for the last week 
we got two. I have a blast. The graphics seem a little bit outdated, but when you see those ray rays of light and fog and night and day cycle and it just pre no no it, it has pretty decent graphics outdated textures yes but hey as far as i know if i if i don't keep mixing up other developers this game is developed by seven polish developers i think the developers they absolutely are from poland but i think these are some other company i was researching and checking what had only seven people Anyways, this is not AAA game. I highly doubt they wish they were double A. But these are small indie game, and for small indie game, they have my attention, they have my love, they have my full dedicated videos I'm putting out. I want to finish the game. I'm gonna make a review about it. So far, everything I learned. I'm gonna throw one last one quick small bonus because that might be the only question i haven't answered yet is you will find somewhere let me find some locations yeah i know i know i know where, where to show you um some items some things when you try to build or some let's go not you will find a resource something like this that shows it's a loot or reward i'm in front of it it doesn't matter so the thing is, either you get it through the quest, some absolutely high level quest that will be given as a reward, or you will find them in really secure chests and castles and such such things. Not only topaz, there are some others like like these obsidians and 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 topaz and let me find all these rare diamonds, all these rares, amber. I have six even because I am looting like a crazy. They are in specific locations. They are not for simple gathering. They are unique items that are just by collectibles. This is why I said every single piece in this game is meant to be explored and also looted, of course. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, you can't... There, As far as I can tell, there is no place where they can be purchased. So they are pretty rare. I just filled all my last end game items that's why i use them up but you can find them but you need to play the game it's as simple as that you need to play you need to explore go in those uh, bandit camps and 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 the higher level these you see it's pretty big it's pretty now it's empty but what, before it was empty i bet i brought out some of the goodies from there the higher level you play the higher chance to get these probably in this castle there will be another thing so that's the additional bonus sorry bringing back the end screen and if you have any questions around the game there are a lot of questions there are a lot of people trying to find things i think i have a pretty good idea but besides everything i already explained you should be good to go and be your own robin hood and build that Sherwood. Let's meet in other videos, guys. Cheers.